Hello and welcome back. Today I've decided to give myself a little challenge and that is to create a program that will evolve and teach itself to solve a problem. Now the reason this is a challenge for me is because I've never done anything like this. Um, I'd made that AI video and I mentioned neural nets in there, but I've never actually done it. So this is going to be entirely new for me. I'm gonna do it from scratch. The first thing we're gonna need is a game, a goal, something to accomplish. And I'm thinking pretty uh, simple right now. What I'm thinking is we have a graph. Uh, we pick a random point there. That is our goal. We're trying to get really close to that point. Uh, the program then randomly picks points all over the place. Some of them will end up closer. So what we'll do is we'll split it, let's say 50%. So the 50% that are the farthest away, they're all dead. These are all saved. Now I'm thinking of doing a parent system that will take random pairs of these, and it'll have to be an even number, so uh, you can find random groups of two, and it will essentially breed them together. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to accomplish that yet, but I'll find a way. And then if we look down here, we have parent one, parent two, the line is about here-ish, and there is this distance between them. Now, um, because we already killed 50% of our population, we have to make up for that. So we can't just create two points from these parents to replace them, we actually have to create four. So what I'm thinking is, in the middle of them, I have this point, and then plus a random uh, deviation essentially, and then you'll have four children, one could end up there, there, there and over here. So these four replace these two parents and uh, essentially replace two of these dead points up here. And that means that these four are going to be relatively close to this point. And over time, as you keep going and going, these um, dots will just get closer to that chosen point in theory. But Let's jump right into MATLAB and see what we can do. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is create a graph and show our chosen point on it. Um, a quick warning to um, any programmers out there, this will not be elegant. Uh, this is going to be a messy, messy program. So the first thing we need to do is set up our point, and I'm going to make it the origin. Um, the computer can't cheat. It doesn't know that the origin has any significance to us. Let's try scatter because that's essentially what we're going to do anyway. Ah, there we go. We have our point right in the origin. So for the time being, I'm going to comment that out because we're probably going to be running this to see if there are any bugs. Um, the next thing we're going to do is create all our random creatures. And right now I'm thinking we want 10 rows because that's a number of creatures and two columns. Let's see what happens. Ooh, that looks like a bunch of random dots. Huzzah! <laughs> okay, so there we have the origin and a bunch of these little red dots, which are our creatures. So now, I think we just have to evolve this. What I'm gonna do for that is send it to a separate function to make my life a little easier. Basically, that takes all our data that we have right now, including the point and the creatures, and sends it into this function, which will be a separate thing that then picks out the top five. Oh, I just realized that's a problem. We want it to be divisible by four. That's it. Okay, so instead of 10, we'll do 12, right? Yeah, so then we'll pick out the top six and those top six will breed. That makes much more sense. So the first thing we want to do is find the distance between the creatures and the points and we'll store that in a new matrix, which will be called um, fit matrix i guess okay there we go we stopped it all right so that's our distances at least for this random set um as you can see this one's nine away that's fairly far okay so this is our fitness not just the distance so we actually want to take the inverse of all of this so what i'm going to do is throw in parentheses and then add a one and divide so if we run it 
you'll see now these are fractions and the highest number is actually the best. Okay, here we go. So sort, descend, and that gives us um, essentially tallest or closest to furthest away. Then we just pick the top six. Okay, so I'm just gonna manually do a little trickery here and let's make that one one. So these will have the exact same distance because they are the exact same point. And there's one, one, two, all right, okay, it worked. So um, if you look, the living has both the first point and the second point, which were the same, and there's no bugs apparently. Okay, so there we go. We have a way to find the living creatures. So we now have their location. Okay, so that's it. It runs, it runs. Okay, so this is intentionally pausing. It doesn't take this long to run. But yeah, you can see there, it goes through three generations. So it shows you the first generation, then it'll show you a new one. Nothing's changing right now because nothing's evolving, because nothing's breeding. But I do know what survives. So these empty ones over there, they will all be dead. Um, basically not breed. So like I said, we want to find the center point here between the two parents. And then we want to essentially make four little dots within a random, uh, distance of that, I guess. So let's do a is equal to 42, because that's the meaning of life of the universe and everything. Run. Oh, that didn't work. Okay, what happened? Oh my god. It's imaginary numbers. You're kidding me. Screw it. I'm sorry. I was trying to use I. Should have just done N from the beginning. Sometimes, man. Programming. Okay. God damn it. Where is the problem now? Oh. Forgot a colon. Pretty sure that, like, destroyed a rocket at some point. All right. Hey, we made it all the way to A equals 42. And we now have our three parent nodes. All right, we're good. Okay, so right now, all of the creatures would essentially be on the parent node. So all four children would end up on the same place. Not ideal. We want some uh, genetic mutation in there. So let's go ahead and add some radiation by adding a random number. So we have a range from one to negative one. So let's uh, copy that radiation over and make sure it ends up in the Y variable as well. And I think we're done, guys. Like, this might work. So let's, let's pause for two again. Now let's do two generations. So we have this. Ooh. Ooh, did I just create evolution? <laughs> Okay, so I'm back for one more thing. I realized what was happening with the radiation. Okay, you can see the points are randomly distributed from negative 10 to 10 in both axes, which means on average, their center of mass, basically the average of all points, is about the origin, or around the origin, I mean. So, as you can see here, even if that point wasn't there, and I was just coalescing them into a single species without an actual evolutionary goal, they're going to move towards the center, which just happens to be where the point is. Now that's why if I increase the radiation, it doesn't matter, because even with low radiation, they condense into a species very quickly. As you can see, 
if I lower my time and bring this back up to 10 generations and then move the point off to one side. As you can see, they co coalesce into a species which then slowly hobbles its way towards that point as a group. But basically in the wild, a species will form one of these little clusters. One of them will get slightly better and it will move the entire cluster very slowly towards that point. Now, this is a literal point. In the wild, it's not starving to death, essentially. With very low radiation, they form into a cluster and then just slide their way, slowly getting better. That is a realistic example. But, uh, as you can see there, even in 10 generations, it didn't consistently get to the point in that time. So with a higher radiation, it should, in theory, move faster. So they coalesce and then swarm towards the point. You can see, consistently in 10 generations, it's getting around the point. That wasn't happening with only two radiation. So more radiation means you get there faster, essentially. But you can also see it's less clustered. So, the real world equivalent I thought of was the high radiation sacrifices some of the individuals for the sake of species betterment more rapidly. So we very quickly get to a good-ish model, but it's not very stable. There's always that small group of people that are born with unlucky circumstances. Um, with low radiation, we cluster very tightly around this point. Uh, if we run again, see, we don't quite make it there. We aren't quite perfect but at least we're in a single group. But anyway, that's gonna be all for this episode. I'm really proud of myself. I actually got this to work somehow. Um, I have to go do something. Um, so for now, I am Con Hathi, and I will see you in the next video.